Household Services for Grade 7 and 8, Week 6. Our topic is Work in Team. Basic Concepts of Team and Team Building Basic Concepts of Team and Team Building Central to most team building concepts is the ability to take a group of individuals with a range of strength and create a team. This article is part of your stages of team development series based on the strengths, teamwork, alignment, and results, or the STAR team model. While every team and context are different, team building concepts provide a basis on which to develop your approach in developing a team. The STAR team model suggests that effective teamwork in the workplace happens when four aspects. Individual flourishes as they use and develop their strengths. People come together building relationships that result in effective teamwork. The team leader aligns the team through effective communication of purpose so that individual strengths combine with the teamwork to deliver team's results. And together, Everyone achieves more as performance flows and results that are meaningful and rewarding to the team are achieved. At this stage of beginning to develop team, you will have already used team building techniques to form a team such as establishing the purpose of the team and agreeing the results the team needs to produce, identifying the tasks needed to be fulfilled, and allocating roles and responsibilities based on the strengths. In this space, team building concepts need to build and focus teamwork values, clarify how things are done in the team, identify clear roles in the team and support the team in fulfilling them, encourage participation, manage conflicts by open, fair problem-solving approaches, ensure communication is effective, and clarify individual agendas and how they fit or don't fit with the team goals. Role of the team. When teams are formed, it is normal for people to take different roles according to their position, ability, or character type. Formal roles are the external defined positions that are associated with given responsibilities and are usually allocated according to the position or ability of each person. The following are the five functions of a good team. Number one, trust is the foundation of a good team. Trust is about being vulnerable. The only way to gain trust is if concerns or problems are buried and there are no hidden agendas. Trust is gained through time and evidence. Number two, by conflict management. Great relationships are not characterized by the absence of conflict, but actually the ability to repair after a break or conflict. Things that are damaging to relationships include passive or sarcastic comments and gossip. Number three, commitment is a promise or firm decision to do something or the fact of promising something. Number four, accountability. High standards drive accountability. Accountability often has a negative connotation but it's not necessarily negative. Accountability is simply having high standards and taking responsibility, which includes reprimands and praising. And number five, focusing on results. That means there is no status or ego. It's not about us. We must believe that if the team fails, I fail, and if I succeed, we succeed. Objectives of the team to understand the importance of working as a team and the impact of team spirit on achieving organization. To enhance participant skills when practicing teamwork concepts in housekeeping. To be able to use techniques for handling team interpersonal problems and to gain greater insight. Standard operating and or other workplace procedure. Standard operating procedures are written step-by-step -step instructions that describe how to perform a routine activity. Employees should complete them in the exact same way every time so that the business can remain consistent. 
Standard operating procedures help maintain safety and efficiency for departments such as productions or operations, sales and customer service, employee training, legal, and financial. Team structure. It refers to the composition of an individual team or of a multi-team system. It is an integral part of the teamwork process. A properly structured patient care team is an enable for the result of the effective communication, leadership, situation monitoring, and mutual support. It is an important to identify and recognize the structure of the teams because teamwork cannot occur in the absence of clearly defined team. Inter- and interpersonal relationship among guests and colleagues. There are different interpersonal and intrapersonal skills that one needs to master to be able to stand with the demands of the job in housekeeping. The two skills have long been recognized as important factors to be successful in school and in workplace. The interpersonal relationship. It refers to something taking place between people. Interpersonal skills includes ability to manage conflict, ability to solve problem, ability to communicate clearly, ability to listen, demonstrate responsibility, being accountable for your actions, showing appreciation, and flexibility. The intrapersonal relationship is an interaction between members within a group and the resultant influence on individual members. The abilities and talents exist within the individual which aids him or her in solving problem and it refers also to something taking place inside one individual. The intrapersonal skills are adaptability, self-awareness, self-management or self-development, relationship management, and social awareness. Work as a team member Team member is defined as a person belonging to a specific group of people involved in attempting to achieve a common goal. For example, a team member could be one of several institution investors trading the asset markets together or a business person working closely with others within their company. Workplace context. As policymakers increasingly focus on workplace learning as a way of improving organizational performance, the debate about the learning organization has grown, counterbalancing the often over-optimistic assumptions made about the future of work and learning. This module argues that without a contextualized analysis of the field, our understanding of the learning environment is limited. It reconsiders the true role and nature of workplace learning in context. Conditions of work environment. Working conditions are the core of paid work and employment relationships. Generally speaking, working conditions cover a broad range of topics and issues from working time or the hours of work, rest periods, and work schedules to remuneration as well as the physical conditions and mental demands that exist in the workplace. The work environment comprises the physical, geographical location and the immediate surroundings of the workplace, including the factors are air quality and noise level, as well as the perks and benefits associated with unemployment. Working conditions are defined as the circumstances such as working hours, stress, degree of safety, or danger that affect the workplace. Improving the work environment and conditions contributes greatly to the staff motivation and subsequently to their performance. An improved work environment and better work conditions can also reduce staff turnover and the related costs. The employer-employee relationship and the work agreements. The agreement binding both the employer and the employee is known as employment contract. However, the absence of employment contract does not indicate an absence of an employer-employee relationship. When the existence of the employer-employee relationship is in question, the court has generally applied the fourfold test. 
if the employer-employee relationship can be established, the employer may not terminate the service of the employee without a just or an authorized cost. There are four elements of employer-employee relationship. To determine the existence of an employer-employee relationship, the four-fold test is usually applied. First, the selection and engagement of the employee. Second, payment of wages. Third, the power of dismissal. And fourth, the employer's power to control the employee on the means and method by which the work is accomplished. Practice safety, good housekeeping, and quality guidelines in workplace. To maintain a safe and healthy workplace, housekeeping must be a priority. According to the Canadian Center for Occupational Health and Safety, or the CCOHS, poor housekeeping can present hidden hazards that may cause incidents, including tripping on the loose objects in walkways, being hit by falling objects, and slipping on wet or dirty surfaces. The CCOHS recommends establishing a workplace housekeeping program that manages the orderly storage and movement of materials from point of entry to exit. The center advises training employees on how to safely work with the products around them. Also, integrate housekeeping responsibilities into jobs by having workers cleaned up as they go during shifts by removing the waste and unused materials and inspecting their work area to ensure cleanup was properly completed. Additional tips includes ensure all spills are immediately cleaned up, replace worn, rip, and damaged flooring, and place anti-slip flooring in areas that cannot be continually be cleaned such as an entrance. Maintain clean light fixtures to improve lightning efficiency. Keep aisle and stairways clear. Consider installing warning lights and mirrors to help improve sight lines in blind corners. And regularly inspect, clean, and repair all tools. Do not use damaged tools. A time to remember. This is Mylene Huliganga. Thank you for watching.